Uh, Patrick Lecomant from Renault Design. Yeah. What, what is your title? Uh, I'm uh, Senior Vice President of Corporate Design. Yeah. Well, we just want to ask you a couple of questions that designers might be interested in, not necessarily the other guys in the automotive business, but just designers. You started out in the 70s designing hubcaps, you said? for. Yes, I designed uh, an absolutely outstanding uh, hubcap uh, on a Simco, which was my first job in uh, 1967. And about six months ago, I went into a museum with one of my sons, and uh, you know, I went next to this car, which was one of the cars that had been designed by Jujaro. It was a Simco 1200S. And there was this hubcap, you know, which just shone in the darkness of the... And I said, I designed that, I designed that. And he said, uh, what, the hubcap? I said, yeah, look at it. I mean, this is my first design. But he wasn't very impressed, you know. It made the car look good, right? Yeah, the rest wasn't so good, but... Uh, and then in the 80s, you, you went to Ford Motor Company, I guess, was that... Well, I joined uh, Ford Motor Company, uh, in fact, in 1968. And I stayed in Ford... Uh, 19 years, no, 17 years, sorry, 17 years, uh, I worked in, in Britain, in, in Germany, uh, the United States, and I did sort of many trips uh, back and forth. Uh, I also did some work in Japan, uh, in Australia. So it's been, a, you know, it was a long, long, long experience with Ford, and it has been the most formative years, I guess. Yeah. So you're, you're part of the aero look at Ford, the, the aerodynamic look that they came out with in the 80s? And well, I was uh, involved uh, with, of course, with the Ford Sierra, which came before the Taurus, which is the first car that um, the, the, from Ford coming out with uh, an aerodynamic look. Uh, The Sierra that was in 1982, but I was also involved in a in a truck which I particularly uh, have fun memories. This is the the Ford Cargo. I don't know whether you remember that truck. Yeah, the cargo truck, which was uh, a truck which which is still being produced in Brazil, so it, it was launched in 1981 and uh, it's still being built today. So you know, that's got to be a record of some sort. <laughs> yeah, <isn't> it? <laughs> it's uh, it comes uh, close to the the famous uh, N series of Ford, you know, which was a truck which lasted for almost ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and. From those days, the 80s, were the aero look? And the aero look was, uh, was extremely uh, important uh, and had a, a major impact for m many, many years. Unfortunately, the aero look uh, made us enter into the, the bio design uh, era, uh, very much under the influence of um, Luigi Colani, 
and we started having this sort of degradation of uh, towards these uh, highly organic shapes, which didn't, which were more flabby than 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 muscular. And when I uh, left um, Ford, I went for a couple of years to the Volkswagen Audi Group, and then I came into Renault. And in Renault, we did a, a series of concept cars, and one concept car in 1994, which I think had a strong influence, which was the Argos, which we call the Spirit of 1994, which was a for us uh, design designers uh, in Renault a sort of a year zero where we basically rejected biodesign to go to a new era of lean and machine-like and more geometric intense. This car, the Argos, uh, clearly had an influence on the Audi TT. Uh, and I remember an interview, Freeman Thomas, uh, talking about the, uh, this, this car, that it had had a, quite a big influence for them. And so, styling has continued to evolve. Uh, there is, you know, I, I, I have no problem these days to talk about both styling and design, a word which was kind of taboo for most of my period. But I, I've made myself... Uh, I've sort of accepted the, the notion of, of styling, which is a very noble uh, activity. Uh, so there's been a, a strong evolution in, in the recent past where we, we, we haven't maintained this sort of rigorous, rigid, geometric shapes. And we've entered an era where we have a much greater attention to the quality of the volumes of the shapes and uh, associated with uh, uh, lines with the sweeps uh, which are clearly identified on the body which are a little bit like you know a nice through canvas
and um, so we we are in this kind of era right now and I think we're probably entering a new golden age of automobile design uh, I really do not feel that uh, uh, that today it is more difficult to design a car than it was let's say in the 1920s when supposedly there was supposedly it was freedom I think very much in line with um, uh, uh, what uh, uh, Charles Eames said, he said uh, constraints are the designer's best friend and I think that constraints adds to the challenge right. and so I think that uh, young designers who are starting today uh, they're going to be, uh, they're going to uh, arrive in an era where design is going to become even more important than it was 15, 20 years ago right. and I think that we're going to see some great design work in the future just one more quick question before you have to go but uh, design was aero look into the crisp lean machine look what's next well if I knew it I would uh, I wouldn't tell you <laughs> <laughs> okay any hint or any idea of what you think is next uh... well I think we're going towards much more emotional uh, design much more than than, than in the past uh, I find that uh, even rigorous uh, engineers are uh, accepting the fact that uh, uh, function doesn't suffice that uh, we are going to go to we're going to spend probably a little bit more money on on appearance on and we also will want to uh, stress uh, more uh, uh, ar architectural uh, innovation and probably the the notion of uh, of doing features which uh, allows the salesman when he meets the customer to say and they've even thought of that yeah. and you know when you're a designer and you can achieve that sort of magic uh, relationship with the uh, salesman then through to the customer then I think you're under a good thing the, com the wow. computer tools as a design process well, uh, computers are um, to me are exactly the same as uh, French curves in the past or the change from pencils uh, to uh, to crayon to uh, magic markers and so on. Uh, I don't think it has uh, that much of an influence, expect, except the fact that it's enabling us to do a lot more cars. It's enabling us to reduce. I mean, from our experience in Renault, we've reduced the development cycle by 20 weeks and also by 20% yeah. by an intensive use of digital uh, design. So we are probably one of the companies who are the most in to digital design, but I don't see it as it having taken over and having an influence on the, you know, it, we are still behind the machine. And if there is a problem, uh, the problem really exists between the computer and the chair. That's the guy sitting in it. Okay. That guy sitting right. in the chair. Yeah. What are you, so you look at it as a tool? I use it as, I, I look at it as a tool, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You still need a 3D model in front of you, you can oh, touch and fill? And sure, and our design process involves sketching, digital work, milling out, rip, uh, on a, um, rip, milling out foam models, getting back into the computer, working, and then doing another foam model, and then and so on and so forth. We do clay work only on the go with one, because that's where we want to put the quality, because that's the only other car of the whole cars that we've designed, which is actually going to be sold to the customer. So yeah. that's where the final quality go, right. has got to go. So you finally finish it up by hand, yeah. and that's the way that's it right. should be. That's I agree. Right. Okay. Thank you, Pat. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay.